In this video, I'd like to show you how to make your own custom wound springs like these. There's been quite a few project ideas that I've skipped over in the past because they would require springs that are almost impossible to find. By learning to make your own, you're no longer limited to the small selection of spring sizes that are commonly available, and that selection is especially small for springs that are this large. This is the first part of the tool that I've come up with for winding springs. And you can see on this side, it's simply a short length of one inch diameter iron pipe. And I've welded a length of angle iron to the side. I'll demonstrate what I use this piece of angle iron for in a minute. But for now, don't worry if you don't have a welder because you don't necessarily need this piece. The other part that I've made for this tool is this length of one half inch pipe with a hole drilled toward one side and a T threaded onto the other. This is a 1 half by 3 quarter inch T that I'll simply be using as a receiver for a handle. The hole drilled into this pipe is meant to hold the end of a wire to keep it held as the pipe turns. I like to do a wrap or two right next to each other at the start so the spring has nice flat ends. The piece of angle iron gives the wire a solid object to brace against so it only takes minimal effort to guide the coils to whatever spacing you'd like by hand. Not just any wire will work well for springs. What you really need is known as music wire. Hardware stores will usually stock this in 3 foot lengths, and if not, most will be able to order it in for you. As the wire reaches the end, this starts to get a bit dangerous. The spring has been building excess tension this entire time, and if the end slips off, it will unwind several turns in a fraction of a second. This could really hurt. Keep your hands out of the way and wear eye protection. With the coil off the pipe, it may look a bit messy in some areas. Some touch-up work can be made with pliers. For the ends that may be really bent out of place, they can either be trimmed off or heated with a torch to be more easily adjustable. You don't want to heat any part of the inner coils this hot because it destroys the metallurgy that lets the spring retain its shape. As I mentioned earlier, the angle iron isn't necessary to make these springs. The end of the wire can simply be braced by hand, it's just a little more difficult. You also have to be even more careful once the winding is finished to release the tension gently. It would be a good idea to wear gloves for this. Of course, any size pipe or wire can be used with this method to create springs of whatever size or strength is needed. Hopefully you can find this method useful. Stay tuned for more projects. Thanks for watching.